Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to create a single color SVG in Affinity Designer 2 for the iPad that you can bring into Cricut Design Space. This is the first video in a series where I'm going to show you how to create a single color SVG, then I'll show you how to add color to it, and then I'll show you how to add text. And we're doing this in Affinity Designer 2 for the iPad, which is $19.99 for a single download. So you don't have to pay monthly or anything. You just pay once and you're done. I have Affinity Designer 2 pulled up on my iPad here. And first, I just want to set a certain preference on here that I think just makes it so much easier when you're using this program. So let's go to Preferences on the bottom left, and then we're going to go to Tools, and we're going to turn on Allow Canvas Rotation in All Tools. So go ahead and click that so that it's over to the right and it's on. And this is going to make it so that you can easily rotate the canvas while you're drawing. And then we can click Done. Now let's create a new document. So I'm going to click the New Document button right here and new document. For the size, it doesn't really matter that much because it's gonna be in vector, so it can be scaled to any size. This has letter automatically chosen and that's fine for me, so I'll just do that and I'll click OK. Now we can add in our drawing. So I'm going to click the three lines up here and I'm gonna do place and then I'm gonna pick place from photos you might have yours in the files, but for me, if I take a photo of the drawing with my iPad, then it'll come up in photos. Or if I draw the sketch in Procreate and save it as a picture, it'll show up in photos. So I think that that's the easiest way to do it. And I'm just gonna go to Recents, and here's my drawing of this little giraffe with his summer hat and sunglasses. And it shows it right here, but we haven't placed it yet. So I'm just going to click and drag for wherever I want him to be and then let go. And then you can also just move it around too if you wanna kind of put it in a better place. Now let's get this ready for drawing. So I'm going to go to the layers panel, which the button is right over here. So I'm going to click on that. Let's click on the three dots so we get that layers option. So these are all the options for my sketch layer. I'm gonna click the lock button. So now it's locked and we can't move it around. And I'm also just going to bring the opacity down so that it's nice and light and we can draw over it and see what we're drawing. Now I'll go back to the layers panel. I'm going to add a new layer by clicking this plus sign and I'll do new vector layer because we are going to be drawing this in vector for the Cricut. Now we can hide the layers panel and we can start drawing. For drawing, we're gonna use the brush tool. I'm going to click the pencil tool right here and then I'm gonna click it again and then you can pick between pencil or vector brush. And I'm going to choose vector brush. And now we have these options here where we can make it wider and we can also change the opacity, but we're not gonna mess with the opacity. We're just going to make the brush thicker or thinner. And let's make sure we have the right brush selected. So I'm gonna come over here and click on this little brush right here. And we want to just use the standard vector brush. So let's click these little arrows so that we get to pens and we're just gonna do solid pen with pressure. So go ahead and click that, and then that's gonna make sure that we have the right pen selected so that we're able to convert it properly later. And then I'll just click the little brush icon to close it. And now you can just test your brush and see if you like it. And this actually isn't changing for the pressure, so I'm gonna undo by using my two fingers and just tapping. And up here where it says none, we can go over and we're gonna pick pressure. Now if we draw, you'll see that the harder you press, the thicker it gets. 
but this doesn't really have enough variation for me. So I'm gonna click on this little dot here with the number 16. And here we can really set it to what we want. So I want mine to be a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna go to width and I'm just gonna drag it over. And we can also change the size variance. So if we want it to get really skinny and thick, or if we want it to like not have a lot of variance, we can bring it down. So you can also just like mess around with that and see what you like for your style of art. And then we can click OK. And I like that a lot. Now we can go ahead and start tracing. And if you draw something and then realize that you just want to change it a little bit, you have your node select tool, so you can click on that. Then you'll be able to grab the nodes and you can actually move them around. And then you'll have these little handles here that you can use to modify your curves a bit. So you can use that to really perfect your lines. And then when you're ready to draw again, just click on the vector brush tool again. You can also delete some anchor points if you want. This line is a little bit wobbly, so if I just delete some of my anchor points, then it'll smooth it out because it'll be less places where the line's going to kind of change direction. So I can grab like this point right here and then just click the trash can icon right here and now it's gone. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. So I have the tail coming out here and I have this whole long line here. And I want this part to be open. So what I would need to do is break up this long line right here. To do that is really easy. I'm just going to click right in the middle here and then that's where I want to split it. And then I can just go up here and you'll find where it says that it'll take one point and split it. So I'm just going to click that and now it split it and these are now two separate lines and I can just pull these out and there we go. Now we have that space there. Now I'm done tracing my giraffe and I can turn off the bottom layer because we're done with the sketch now. So I'm going to go to my layers panel and I'm going to scroll down and I'll find the photo.jpg right here. And then I'll just click the trash can icon. And now all this other stuff is all on layer one. We can collapse that. Let's hide the layers panel. Now for the next step, we're going to change all of these lines into shapes for the Cricut because that's how the Cricut likes to read the file. It wants it to be all in shapes. And right now, if we grab our node select tool, it's all in lines that we can move around. So what I like to do is save this as a file first. So in case you ever want to come back and make any changes or move anything around, then it'll be a lot easier being able to manipulate the lines. So let's go back to the file list and we have this here and then we're going to click the three lines and do save. And I can name this giraffe lines and then save and then I'm just going to click move and now we can click the three lines and we can do save as 
and then that is going to duplicate it. So we can do giraffe shape and save and then click move. Now this is the giraffe shape and we have the one with the lines saved. So if we ever wanted to go back and open the other one, we could just go to open and then find it. So I'm going to click on this and now we can convert this guy to all shapes. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go to the three lines, expand stroke. And now if you click on the node select tool, you can see that it all is all these little nodes. And if you zoom in, you can see that each shape is outlined. Each line is now a shape that is outlined. But if you've ever used the Cricut, then you know that it would cut out this shape and then it would also cut out this shape. And so this little part right here would end up getting cut out and you'd have a hole in your piece. So because of that, we need to combine all of this into one single shape. So with all of it selected, we're just going to click back on the select tool. And then up here in these menu options, we have this one right here that shows two shapes combining. Go ahead and click on that and then we're just going to do add and now it's going to be one single shape and if you zoom in and you can click on your node select tool and you can see that it's all outlined with all these little nodes. Now we are ready to export this as an SVG and bring it into Cricut Design Space. So we can click the three lines and then we're going to do export and just make sure that you pick SVG up here in the options. To make sure that it comes in as the proper size when you bring it into Design Space, you wanna turn off Set View Box. So I'm gonna click that so that it's off, and then I'm going to click OK. And then you could do Move. And now we can go to Cricut Design Space and check our work. So we're just gonna make sure that everything came through OK. I'm in Cricut Design Space and I'm just going to create a new document and then I'm going to click Upload, Browse Files, and it's right here. And I'm going to give it a name. Now we can click on the Layers panel and we can see that it came through as one layer and it looks good. That is it for creating a single color SVG in Affinity Designer 2 on the iPad. Stay tuned for the next video where we will add color to our SVG and then after that we will add text. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or as always you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.